The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello learners. Welcome to this learning program. I'm Ate Janvi, your economics teacher. Let us begin our lesson by correcting the assignment from our previous lesson. There we have the assignment. Consider the table below and answer the questions that follow. We have the table. Here we have number of workers, that is labor, we have land, we have total product, TP. So we find out that number of workers changing, land remains the same because it is a fixed factor. So let us look at the questions. Identify the variable and the fixed factor in the table. Identify the variable and the fixed factor in the table. Distinguish between marginal fiscal product and average product. Then C, calculate the total, the, the marginal fiscal product. And Roman 2, the average fiscal product. Now, beginning with question 1, uh, A, which is for us to identify the variable and the fixed factor in the table. Just by looking at the table, we find out that the variable factor is that factor of production whose proportion increases as output, which is the total product, is increasing. Therefore, our variable factor is labor, which is number of workers, and our fixed factor is land, which remains constant. So variable factor is the number of workers, and the fixed factor is land. B. Distinguish between marginal physical product an average physical product. Talking about marginal physical product, it is that addition to total product when one more unit of input is introduced in the production process. That is, the change that occur on total product when one more unit of a worker is added in the production. While the average physical product has to do with that total output produced by one person in the production process. That is output per worker in the production process. That is average physical product, also known as average product. Now, for us to calculate now the marginal physical product and the average physical product. The marginal physical product, the formula is always Marginal fiscal product, MPP, is equal to change in total fiscal product over change in input. And if we assume input to be pure, it means we are looking at total product 2 minus total product 1 order over input 2 minus input 1. That is the change. Now, as for the average physical product, which is the same as average product, we take total product, that is total product, over input, number of workers. Input, which is number of workers. Now, this is the formula for marginal product, also known as marginal physical product, and that is the formula for 
average product. Now, this is the variable factor, and this is the fixed factor land, this total product. We cannot use land here in the calculation of the marginal product and the average product because land is not, the proportion of land is not changing, it's fixed. Therefore, we are going to use the proportion of labor, which is the number of workers, as our change in input. So if we do that, we take for the total product 24 minus 8 over 2 minus 1, we will have 16. Now we look, we see that the marginal product for the first unit is always the same as the total product for the first unit, which is always the same as the average product for the first unit. Therefore, if we go by that formula, we take 24 minus 8 over 2 minus 1. We are going to have 16 over 1, which is equal to 16. So that is how we do for marginal physical product. We'll be able to fill the rest of the column. Now, for average product, we simply take total product, which is 24, divided by 2, give us 12. 54 divided by 3, give us 18. So to get this 30, we take 54 minus 24, ordered over 3 minus 1, minus 2. 54 minus 24 will give us 30, divided by 1, give us 30. We take 84 minus 54, over 4 minus 3. So we do that, we fill the columns. Okay. Now, our lesson has the following plan, beginning from the objectives, previous knowledge, problem situation, lesson activity, summary, exercises, and assignment. Let us look, begin with the objective. And the first objective here is to enable learners to define production in the short run. State the law of diminishing returns and its assumptions. Illustrate and explain the various stages of the law of diminishing returns. Explain the relationship between total product, average product, and marginal product. Define production in the long run. State the law of return to scale and types of return to scale. Illustrate the law of return to scale. And then, we will bear it or accept the fact that learners have witnessed their parents undertake some investment or business projects in their neighborhood. Therefore, they already have some knowledge as far as this lesson is concerned. Now, let us take an exemplary situation. We find an entrepreneur in your locality complains to you that over the years, he has been making use of the cheap labor in your locality to increase output. But recently, as he recruits more workers, output per head decreases instead. What advice can you give to him to overcome this problem? He has been making use of the cheap labor. He keep on employing workers, employing workers, employing workers. But recently, the more workers he employs, when he go determining the product per worker, the output per worker, he finds out that the output per worker is instead decreasing. Now it comes to you to advise him to overcome this problem. So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to acquire the knowledge that will permit us to solve a problem like this around us. Now let us begin by looking at short-run production. When we talk of short-run 
it is a time period within which firm cannot vary all its factors to increase output. That is, firms cannot vary land, labor, capital. The entrepreneur here can only vary labor and all the other factors will remain fixed. Okay, and in this case, we will have variable factor and we will have fixed factor. Just like we have seen in our assignment, we had land and we had labor. Labor was the variable factor and land was the fixed factor. So that is an indication that that is production in the short run. Talking about the law of diminishing returns, in other words, we call it the law of variable proportion. Variable proportion because this law occurs because of the variation that occurs with variable factors. So we want to see how output changes as units of variable factors are added into the production process. So this law states that as successive units of variable factor, say labor, are added to fixed factor of production, the marginal product, also known as marginal fiscal product, will first of all rise and then start falling. Will first of all rise and then start falling. It therefore means that it is not in it is not all the time that you keep on adding labor into the production process. Now, for us to be able to understand the law of diminishing returns. There are some assumptions to make us understand this law or to make this law to be explicit. We assume that the firm is operating in the short run. It means that we cannot use this law, we cannot observe this law for a firm operating in the long run. We assume that all unit of variable factors are equally efficient. It means that as you bring in worker A, the output that worker A produces is the same as the worker B that you are going to bring in. So they are equally efficient. No worker produces more than another. That is the assumption. We assume that the technique of production do not change. That is, level of technology remains the same. means that we are using the same approach to produce. There is no time that we are going to change the approach of production. And if we change the approach of production, we can no longer see this law operating. It is assumed that output can be measured in cardinal values or units, meaning that we can, it is not a qualitative val variable, it is a quantitative, where we can measure the unit of output. It is assumed that imperfect substitutes of factors of production beyond a certain limit, meaning that beyond a certain limit, they cannot be perfect substitute of factors of production any longer. Now, what are the stages of this law? We have stage one, which is increasing returns. And when we talk of increasing returns, it is when the total product of the firm is increasing at an increasing rate, meaning that the total product of the firm is increasing at an increasing rate. If you look at the marginal product, the marginal product is rising. The marginal product is increasing. That is when total product increases at an increasing rate, when marginal product is increasing. Now, stage two, which is diminishing returns, that is when total product is increasing now at a decreasing rate. It means the marginal product of the firm start reducing. That is when we talk about diminishing return has set in. And then we have zero returns, which is when the marginal product does not change. It remains at what? Point zero. It therefore means the total product remains constant. Let us say if total product is 30, you add more level, if it remains at 30, 
you add more level, remain at 30, it means that the firm has attained zero returns. Because if you go looking for the marginal product here, marginal product will be zero. Stage four, which is negative returns. This is the point where the total product of the firm starts falling. It means the marginal product is instead negative. When you bring in a worker, the worker instead reduces the output of the firm. The product, the output that the firm, the worker brings in is negative. It means at this point in time, that worker is no longer needed in the production process. Now, look at this table which illustrates the law of diminishing returns. It is still our table and we find the total product increasing up to this point when they employ the sixth worker it is 100. They employ the seventh worker it remains at 100. They employ the eighth worker it goes down to 96. It means that at this point the firm has attained zero returns. But from here, where we find the total product increasing, and we look at the marginal product, we see that it is also increasing. It means this firm is experiencing increasing returns. But we find at a certain point where the marginal product reduces from 30 to 13 to 5, whereas total product is still increasing, it means this firm is experiencing decreasing returns. Now, we look at this point eight, when the eighth worker is employed, the marginal product is negative, and that is when you see the total product of the firm start decreasing. Remember, that entrepreneur was complaining to you that after recruiting workers for some years, now when you add the number of workers, the output per person is instead dropping. That was his complaint, you see, it falls to 12. So, you now understand that the, the firm of that entrepreneur was subjected to diminishing returns. Therefore, it shows that the situation of the short run is over. And therefore, you should start thinking of the long run production, which we are going to see. Now, looking at the diagram, we see from here where our marginal product is rising. This firm is experiencing increasing returns. But as from here, where the marginal product, where the average product is highest, and the marginal product cuts the average product and falls, that is when the firm is experiencing decreasing returns. So we have zero returns here, which is when the marginal product now is zero. It is at this point, seven, zero. And from there, it goes to negative returns, which is when the marginal product crosses to the negative side. So, that is the illustration of the table that we have just seen. Now, looking at the relationship that exists between total product and marginal product, we will observe that as total product, as marginal product is increasing, total product increases at an increasing rate. And as marginal product is decreasing, total product increases at a decreasing rate. As marginal product is zero, total product becomes what? Maximum or constant. If we go back to our, t our diagram here, we see that as marginal product is rising, total product is increasing at an increasing rate. And when it starts falling, total product is increasing at a decreasing rate. And when it becomes zero, total product is what? Constant. And when it becomes negative, total product starts falling. Now, looking at the relationship between average product and marginal product, the first we would point out is the fact that as marginal product increases, average product also increases, but at a slower rate. You will find out that it is less than the marginal product. And the marginal product curve at that point is above it above 
the total product, the, the marginal product curve. We find a situation like this. As marginal product is rising, total average product is also rising, but at a slower rate, that is why the curve is below that of marginal product. Average product curve is below that of marginal product curve. As marginal product is equal to average product, average product is at its highest point. This is average product at the highest point. And as marginal product, or as average product starts falling, marginal product is falling and falling faster than average product. Now, talking about the long run production, that long run is now a time frame long enough for the firm to adjust even the scale of production, the size. And in this case, it means the firm will have to vary all, vary all its factors. Vary labor, vary land, vary capital. There is no factor of production at that point in time that is still fixed. Now, it therefore means that the firm at this point in time is no longer subjected to the law of diminishing returns. It is subjected to the law of return to scale. It means that the returns of the firm is based on what? The size of production. Now, the law of return to scale, like we have seen, it states that in the long run, all factors are variable in supply. And output can only increase by increasing all the factors. That is what the law states. It has its own stages, just like the case of diminishing returns. We have the first stage, which is increasing return to scale. And this occurs when, when all the factors are increased by a given proportion. And then output increases by double or more than the proportional increase in input, then we talk of increasing return to scale. For decreasing return to scale, we increase input by a given proportion, and the proportionate increase in output is lesser than the increase in input. Then it means the firm is subjected to the law or to the to decreasing return to scale. I have the last one, which is constant return to scale, which is when we increase input by giving proportion and output increase proportionally to that increase in input. Then we talk of constant return to scale. Look at this table here, which illustrates the law of return to scale, also known as what? The law of constant proportion. We look at this, we see determine the various types of returns from the table. We have the scale of production as the firm size is changing. We have land changing, labor changing. This is the output. So, if we look at the proportion of the change, we can determine the return to scale by calculating the percentage change in either land or labor and comparing it to the percentage change in what? Output. So, if we do that, we are going to see this is percentage change in land or labor if you take 12 minus 10 over 10 times 100 over 1 we are supposed to have 2 over 1 over 10 times 100 which is 200 over 10 giving us 20 that is how you get this 20 if you do the same for output you take 140, 140 minus 100 over 100, you are supposed to have 40, 140 minus this, 40 over 100, which is, uh, that is this one times 100 over 1. We are having 40 over 100 times 100. So we are having, the answer is 40. Because this cancel this, is 40%. So it means that if land is varied by 20% and output increases by 
So you see that the proportionate increase in input, which is 20, is less than the proportionate increase in output. So that is the situation of what? Increasing returns. So if you do that for all, you are going to understand that from this point, when the size of the firm changes from 1 to 2, the firm experiences increasing return. When it goes to 3, the firm experiences, you find here 50 and here 50, means constant returns. When it goes to 4, you find here 100 and here 40, it means the firm experiences what? Decreasing returns. Now, let us look at the summary of this lesson. We find out that production, in the long run, the firm experiencing return to scale, whereby there's either increasing, decreasing, or constant return to scale. Looking at the exercise one, we have, if, if a firm doubles all its factor, inputs of land, labor, and capital, and output is more than doubled, we can, we can say the firm has experienced what? It means the firm experiencing increasing returns. Because land, labor, capital are all inputs. And if they are doubled, and land and output increase more than double, it is a situation of what? Increasing return to scale. Looking at exercise two, a firm increases the amount of labor, raw material and capital used in the production by 25%. And if output increases by 15%, then the firm should be experiencing what? Decreasing return to scale. Because up input increases by 25, output increases by 15. So increase in output is less than increase in input. That is what? Decreasing return to scale. Now, exercise three, a firm experiences its scale of production. That is, a firm expands its scale of production by investing in an additional factory space and machinery what is the most likely impact of this decision on cost it has expanded its uh, production sc scale by acquiring what an additional factory space and machine so variable cost will fall fixed cost will rise total cost will be unchanged average cost will rise automatically the fixed cost of production of that firm has increased because the firm has acquired what? Machinery and factory space, which, is, which are what? Fixed factors of production. Okay, now let us look at the assignment, which we will look at the correlation in the next lesson. A, distinguish between the law of variable proportion and the law of constant proportion. And B, Explain the importance of the law of variable proportion. Now, you can go to make more research on this lesson by looking at the following references. We have come to the end of this lesson. So in our next lesson, we'll look at production part 7. Una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana matege mut, ngani la kiri watege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike. Mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, 